Hey everyone, happy Saturday. Chase here from the Cruiser Cult. Today for our Saturday Tech Series, we thought we'd talk about how to wire up E46 BMW seat heaters and power motors in your Land Cruiser retrofit. Let's get into it. So as our rigs get older and the OEM seats, the foam starts to break down, um, you know, it's getting time to replace the seats or rebuild them. And a really popular choice um, with the Land Cruisers is to just swap out the seats for a more modern uh, seat that generally is more supportive than the older OEM seats. And a really popular choice for that is the BMW seats. And uh, they come in two flavors. So there's the E46 seats, uh, which go to the uh, early 2000s. And then there's the, the later E90 seats. And today we'll be talking about uh, a clean way to retrofit the E46 uh, seats into your uh, Land Cruiser. And we're actually gonna to touch on the E90 seats, the, the more modern seats uh, in the next installment. So first things first, locate a, a good pair of seats that in a color that you like. Um, I got these gray, they match the gray interior of my FJ62 pretty nicely. Um, but you can get lots of different co uh, covers for these seats, which is really fantastic. There's a lot of aftermarket support. And so um, identify what seats you want, acquire them, and then get some adapter mounting brackets. Um, I got some, uh, a really nice pair from Torfab. They make a fantastic seat adapter brackets for the, the BMW seats to go into your 60 series. Um, so once you get them mounted, uh, then you want to figure out, well, if they're powered, you're going to want to figure out how to wire them up. Now there are manual versions of these and some people prefer those. So it's up to you whether you want to get the electric or the manual versions of these BMW seats. Um, I want electric for convenience. It is nice just to be able to uh, do the power. And um, also these seats came with uh, heated elements, which in the colder months um, is, a, is a nice little, a little perk to have. So how do you wire up these seats? So um, you can look under the connectors here. And um, also when getting the your seats, make sure you get the matching pigtail from the salvage yard or whatever other seller um, you know, you're getting the seats from. It makes it a lot easier to wire these up than having to source the connectors um, and, and the wires and terminals. Um, but, but you can find them separate, but it's just more convenient if you get the pigtails. So um, first things first, on the connector here, on this side here, terminals 13 and 14, those actually power the, the motors in the seats here. And you can slide this off the connector here and you'll have a brown wire and a red wire. The brown is the ground and that is on um, terminal 14 and 13 is the red. That's the hot for the motors. And I wired these up to uh, their own individual 30 amp relays in the engine bay there for uh, just for safety. And I ran 12 gauge wire to power the, the seats. Now. Um, so that's pretty, this pretty straightforward to power the seats. I have the relays activated by an ignition source. So they only work when the key is in the ignition, the on position, um, people decide to have them powered all the time. It's up to you. I just like the added safety feature of nothing's on when the key's off. Um, like anything, being, being able to drain the battery when the truck is supposedly off. Now, uh, the trickier part in wiring these seats, if is the heated seat elements. Now, first thing is some of these seats didn't come from the factory with uh, heated elements. And to figure out if your seats have the built-in elements is to look on the connector <coughs> here. And we'll, we'll have pictures uh, also in the post, so close-up pictures so you can see. But basically you're gonna look for on here, they're, they're numbered, the pins, and you're gonna wanna look for um, pins 23, 24, and 25. If you have terminals, in these positions here, 23, 24, and 25, your seat has heat elements inside, which is awesome if you want that sort of thing. Um, I definitely did. Now, when I bought the seats though, uh, this pigtail did not have wires or terminals for the heated elements. And so um, I did the deep dive on the internet and, and scrolled through way too many BMW forums. Um, and I got to say, in the Lion Cruiser community, we're really spoiled about our um, access to wiring diagrams and vast technical knowledge. The BMW side 
it was definitely not as nice. Um, but we found the correct terminals uh, and how to wire these up now. And those part numbers will all be uh, in the post. So you can order the terminals and appropriate wire to get your seats wired up. Now, the next part of the equation is how to control this, the, the heating elements. And uh, the one the approach that I took was to um, keep it all in a similar system. So I went and sourced BMW uh, seat heater switches. Now, some people um, like to use other switches, maybe a Toyota switch or another kind of switch. Um, I thought it'd be nice to keep it all in the same manufacturer for, um, you know, kind of perfect function. Everything was designed for each other. And so I sourced a um, switch from an E39, which is this uh, switch, and then also an E46, which is this switch. And what I like about the BMW switches is that they fit really nicely, at least in the 60 series, in the coin holder slots in the center console. That's where I wanted the seat heater switches. Um, and so these fit perfectly. I made a little trim piece to kind of fill out the width, but the, the lengthwise here is perfect for the coin slot, which is, which is always appreciated. <laughs> Makes the insulation a little easier. So how do you get this switch to heat the seats? So if you look, both of these switches, even though they're different series, different styles, they have the same pinouts on the back here. There's six pins. And again, when you buy these switches, ask for the matching pigtail. It just saves you a lot of time. Um, this switch here, the earlier one, kind of has a little bit more of an adjustability range. It's a sliding wheel and an on-off here. This one, E46, is just low and high. I ended up going with these um, because I had a broken one of these and I didn't have a matching pair. So, But I'm just happy with the low and high. It's totally fine. Um, so back to the pins. On the back, there are six pins. And if you get the matching pigtail, it saves you a lot of time. Um, so how to wire this switch up to power this. So um, pin number one, and again, we'll, we'll post a, a picture diagram of this. Uh, you're going to wire that up to an illumination source. So whenever you turn the lights on the rig, um, this little seat icon here will light up, which is really nice at night. So you can actually see the switches. Um, so you'll wire pin one to illumination. Pin two is going to be to the NTC signal. So that's the negative thermal coefficient um, sensor. And so what that wire, pin two, actually goes to, you're going to wire that to terminal 23 on your seat. And that is a resistor in the seat that as the seats heat up, the resistance changes in the circuit. And that tells the switch that the seat is not hot enough or just at the right setting and then it'll turn off heat to the seat so it doesn't get too hot. So I really liked using the BMW switches with the seats for that reason. It's a it's a it's a system and it works together. Um, pin three on here is your 12 volt um, your 12 volt source for the seats. Um, four pin four is the ground so you'll just run a ground from the the switch to um, your, the nearest best ground you have and that'll help the seat illumination circuit work and then pins five and six are actually for the heater element so the power goes into the switch and then it goes out five and six so five uh best of my knowledge goes to the bottom element and six goes to the back element um however if you look on the seats there's only one power in on terminal 25 and a negative on 24. So the way I had the switch control uh, the seats, you can do it two ways. And um, the BMW way has the power for the seat actually go into pin three and then come out five and six and go directly to the seat. So it's having uh, the, the full power go through the switch into the seat. Now, the seats use about seven amps when they're on. It's not a lot, but um, I still like it. I still like the relay system that the switch has very low power actually going through it and all then relays handle the, the bigger power. So what I did was I had a uh, 12 volt ignition source go to pin three and then pin five and six 
actually go and trigger a relay in the engine bay. And that relay is then activated when you turn on your switch high and low. And that relay sends then power to pin or terminal 25 here on the pigtail. So I just like that, it's a lot safer. The switch does work if you have power going through it, um, but I just like the safety of the, the relay. And the way that these switches work is when you turn them on high, they actually trigger the relay more frequently. So it's a lot on, on, off, on, off, on, off. Uh, and then if you put it on low, it's just a longer delay between the on off cycles. And that's the way it powers the seats. And so you can kind of hear the relays and the engine bay click periodically if the engine's off. Um, and because of that, I would choose a nice high quality relay since it's gonna be activated a lot while the heat seaters, uh, seat heaters are on. Um, so choose something really nice quality there. And um, we'll have the part numbers for these terminals here if you need to buy those. And then for wire, I used 14 gauge for the power and um, the ground for the seats. And then for the actual, the NTC signal, I use 18 gauge wire. You don't need much, you don't need much at all. Um, yeah, so I think that is about it. It's actually pretty simple um, for the E46 seats. And we'll get into the E90s next time. It's, it's more complicated with their uh, computerized system there. But yeah, hopefully this is uh, really helpful to everyone. We'll provide part numbers um, and potentially where to get some of the terminals. It's super easy. Wiring up is super easy. Um, yeah, it's just wonderful to have nice heated seats, especially in the winter. It takes a little bit of the cold edge off. And uh, yeah, I hope everyone's having a great weekend. Um, thanks for all the, um, you know, the, the likes and the follows. We really appreciate, uh, you know, the interaction with the community. It's really wonderful. And we hope these are always uh, helpful. So cheers, everyone. Happy Saturday.